Well, hey guys, it is Tuesday, July 23rd, 2019 at 7 o'clock p.m. So as promised, we're going to be reviewing The Lion King. So the big hype about The Lion King is that it is basically a classic. It is a cult classic. It is something that um, everyone who's a millennial or even beyond is looking forward to because the first one was just so pivotal to our childhoods. Um, I'm sure we had the tents. We had the sleeping gear, we had the book bags, all of that because The Lion King meant so much to us. It was um, our first Black Panther, if you will. It was something that gave us pride and even though there were no humans in it, it was like set in Africa. It was something that um, we just looked up to and it had so much meaning. It was so powerful and impactful. It was actually a little bit uh, traumatizing at points. Um, it's a movie that gave you so much to look forward to um, just from life itself. Um, and it has so many meaningful lessons. So Lion King was something that the Lion King was something that we were really interested in seeing what they were going to do with the remake, a remake. Um, so you had the CGI in there, you had all of the realistic looking animals and that was all very cool. And so it piqued our interest. And then when we saw that the movie had the likes of Beyonce or Childish Gambino or Donald Glover, if you will, um, Seth Rogen, um, Chiwetel Ejiofor, some really big characters, you were like, oh my God, I got to see this. Not to mention they brought the original Mufasa back, James Earl Jones. Like what? Who can even re replicate that voice? Nobody can. So um, I went to go see the movie and it was very interesting. The opening of the movie incredible just like the original i had chill bumps literally on my arms i did not cry which i was surprised about but i did not cry um but the movie was just really really great um going into seeing it be exactly like how i remembered it only upgraded a little bit because like i said the cgi the special effects the animals looked real it was like somebody broke into the zoo and saw what they did at night put it in a movie that's not real animals don't talk anyway um so that was really great um, but some of the things that I missed in the movie were basically classic lines from the original. And of course, the movie could not be an exact duplicate of the original. But there were some things that I really, really missed. Um, speaking of classic characters, uh, Kyla Pratt did the voice of the original Little Nala. And so when she and Simba were wrestling and she said, Pinja again. That was something I was looking for. However, the new character added their own flavor to it, which was cool. She still said it, but it just wasn't like when Nala said it back in 94. I was looking for that. Um, another thing about it was, uh, first of all, let me stop and backtrack and say that Simba was excellent. I think he had a really great uh, feel for the character. He brought his own flavor to it as well, but he didn't miss a beat. It was perfect. Uh, Rafiki also perfect he was the father in black panther so in a way they tied the two together if you catch that um he was the original king in the black panther and so he played the voice of rafiki in this movie and it was perfect absolute perfection masterfully done um but there were a couple other things that i missed so james earl jones like i said his voice you can't do that voice you can't find that anywhere else so they had to ask him back but when he was about to be murdered um, he said, Scar, help me. And he said that in the original as well. However, in the original, he said, brother. And it just added another la layer of emotion to it. And he didn't say that in this one. And I missed it. I, I could be being deep or whatever, but I missed that part. Um, also, I think Chiwetel Ejiofor was excellent as Scar. The voiceover was amazing. Um, he even had the singing down pat. But... There was the part when he was um, planning the murder of the king with the hyenas. And he was saying, be prepared. And at the end of it, I was waiting for the death of the king. And it didn't happen. So I kind of was like, oh, another all oh moment for me. Um, also, the hyenas were, you, you could tell they were really scared in the original um, of Mufasa. They actually had a part where they said, say Mufasa, ooh, say it again, Mufasa, ooh. And they quivered at the very thought of his name. They still built in the fear of, oh, you know, what's his name? Don't say his name, Mufasa, um, in the movie, in the 2019 version. But it wasn't the same. I was looking for that 
shaky character in the um, hyenas and them getting scared of just the very mention of Mufasa's name. And it didn't happen. Um, so I missed that as well. Uh, so there was just a few things in there that kind of didn't resonate for me because I'm so used to the original, the classic, and it was hard for me to wrap my mind around the new one um, in that way. It still was good, but I missed those parts. Um, as far as the movie overall, I think it was casted okay. Um, I don't know that Donald that Glover was the best choice that could have been made. I don't know. Maybe you can give me a suggestion of who might be, might have been better. Um, he he can sing, but to do a duet with Beyonce is pretty major, right? So some people argue Beyonce can't sing. I happen to feel that even when she speaks, there's a lot of melody in her voice. But of course, you could only know that if you know pitch, if you know intonation, if you know vibrato, if you know music, if you know range, then you know Beyonce can sing. Um, so her singing alongside Donald Glover, she kind of wanted to take off in some parts and you could tell that, but there's only so far he can go. He can sing, but he's, you know, so, um, and then there was the part when he yelled, get away from my mother. And I get very Michael Jackson vibes in that. I just was not scared. I was like, are you serious? But he does have a purity and innocence in his voice that kind of worked well with Simba because he was naive. You know, he was young, he was afraid. And so his voice wasn't as strong as his father's, but he did come into his own eventually. Um, so those were some parts that I really kind of try to not think too much about. I got so many people saying, oh, Beyonce's voiceover was terrible. She's not a great actress, yada, yada, yada. I personally feel like people were being a little extra, a little over the top. They were probably looking for her to not be so great because they think she's not a great actress. But overall, I think she did a great job. Um, it was a voiceover. There's only so far you could go, so much you could do. Um, and so those are some things that I really thought impacted the movie pretty heavily. Also, Seth Rogen is a great character. His voice for the animal that he was portraying was perfect. Even that classic Seth Rogen laugh, the, <laughs> the very throaty, goofy laugh that he has worked well with the character. However, he's not a singer. And so when it came time for him to sing, harmonizing the melody kind of didn't carry over so well. It worked. They got it to, you know, they worked with it, but I feel like his singing didn't come across um, that strong. Um, but it, overall, he did a great job. The voiceover was really good and he brought a lot of um, life to the character, if you will. Um, as far as the special effects go, the CGI in the movie was... Um, it was appreciated. I mean, it was very realistic. It looked like they just went out in the jungle and filmed it and kind of made the animals mouths move or what have you. However, you can't convey the right emotion um, when you're doing CGI like that. Like the part that I appreciated about the original is that they had so much color, the vibrance in the color, um, because it was a drawing, because it was a cartoon they were able to put many more expressions in the animal's faces. I didn't have to see how gross that Pumbaa really was. <laughs> He's a pretty ugly animal. But, you know, it it worked overall. But it was, I, I guess they wanted to supersize it and make it just so realistic because it's 2019 and we want to do something bigger and better and major. But I don't know that it was very necessary to mess with the original. Um, especially being that there were some parts that were missed. The music, there's like, um, it's not an original, a totally original score. There was some new music in there. Um, Beyonce had a really great song in there. But if you're going to have a character like Beyonce in the movie and then not have Nala have a solo in the movie, it, I don't know if that was necessary. Um, like I said, I, I did think Beyonce did a great job, but I'm not saying that someone else could have done better. Um, so it was a really great movie overall. Um, if I had to give it, I'm going to do spotlights. Okay. So out of five spotlights, I would give it maybe three and a half. Um, so I'm interested to know what you all thought about the movie overall. It was good, but I think that it, you could leave well enough alone. The classic was great. So let me know what you think. Um, and I'll talk to you soon. Thanks guys. Looking forward to speaking to you. Bye.